Let's get started making a snake game in 3D. Here's lesson one, moving a snake with keys. Um, this is the beginning of any P5JS 3D program. We've got a setup function, a draw function, and in the create canvas we say we want to use the WebGL renderer. So when we run this, we should see a blank canvas. Okay, let's make the um, let's make a box for the head of the snake, and uh, just for now we'll say it's 50. It has an edge length of 50. Okay, so there's our box, and we want to be able to move it around with the arrow keys. Okay, um, how do we detect that keys are pressed? We could do function key pressed and then just look at what the value of key is. Open the console and do that. Here's a console and click to get the focus in the canvas here. So you see there's arrow right, arrow down, arrow left, up arrow, home, end. That's what they look like. So we can move the box using those keys. Okay, um, just a reminder of how to move anything in 3D. Usually we do a, a push and a translate, which takes X, Y, and Z values for how much you want to move it on each of those axes. So let's just move it over to the right by 100. And then a pop. And push and pop isolate the effects of this transformation so that it doesn't affect other drawing that we do. And now, good, it's moved over to the right and you also can see this left side, this left face of the cube. Good. Now how can we do that in response to key presses? Well, I think we need to have a variable that keeps track of where the cube is and so let's make something like that. Let's call it position, or just for the moment, pause for short. And that's going to be a P5 vector. And a vector, in this sense, is a holder for X, Y, and Z values. And we're going to create the vector here in setup. And the initial position will be at the origin. Now down here, in the translate, we can now use the values of pause. So we could say pause.x, pause.y, pause.z. And let's just run again. Also, I think I should maybe um, clear the background so you can see the dimensions of the canvas. OK, so there's the canvas. There's the box in the center of the canvas. Um, great. There's um, a little technique I'm going to show you here. Instead of individually saying pause.x, pause.y, pause.z, we can take the vector and turn it into an array like this, and then use the JavaScript spread operator. So I don't know whether you prefer the other or this, but this takes the vector, turns it into an array, and then spreads out the three elements of the array as if they were three separate arguments to the translate function. I'm just making sure I haven't broken anything. But that still works. Okay, next thing I think is to examine the keys and see which one is pressed. And if it's one of the keys we care about, we'll change the position. So one approach would be to just say, if key is arrow right, and then we can modify the x component of the vector. So pos.x plus equals 10, say. OK, so I'm pushing the right arrow, and it moves. So let's just do some other ones. So let's just duplicate that. Um, arrow left. Now we decrease this, so we should have right and left, 
That's good. Okay, the thing uh, about the snake game is that you don't make the snake move each time. All you do is choose the direction you want to go. So we've got to get this thing moving on its own and just change the direction. To do that, let's make a direction variable. So now we'll have a position and a direction. And we're going to create the direction to be initially um, zeros. So while the position is just x, y, and z values, the direction is going to contain zeros, negative ones, or ones to say whether we're moving, uh, on which direction we're moving on which axis. Here in draw, this is where we're going to move. So we'll say um, pause dot add, and then we're going to add the direction to the position. Now let's just say we had the direction vector moving to the right on x. Then if I've done this right, this should move to the right by itself. And there it goes. Okay, if I lower that to just a one, it moves more slowly. All right. Now, in, the, in this key business, we're not going to influence the pause directly. We're going to modify the direction. So in the case of moving right, we're going to do something like this. Um, 1, 0, 0. And in the case of moving left, we're going to go like this. Okay. Uh, have I forgotten anything? Let's change this back to, back to 0 so that it doesn't move on its own in the beginning. Okay, it's not moving on its own. I'm going to push the right arrow. Here I go. Now it's moving on its own. I'm not touching anything. Now I push the left arrow, and it's going back. So my inputs, my keyboard inputs, are controlling the direction. The movement is taking care of itself. OK. Now I want to show how to make a mapping between the keyboard inputs and these vectors. We want to have this mapping. So let's call this key to dir, and then we'll create it in here. So key to dir equals, and this is going to be a JavaScript object, and it's going to have keys and values. And so arrow right is going to map to this vector down here. I think you might see what I'm um, building here. And then arrow left is going to go to the other direction. And I'll start with just these first two. Now, when we get a key, what we're going to do is first look in this object, this key to dir to see if we can find the key. So we'll say um, something like um, requested dir equals and then key to dir of key. So this will either return, if we press arrow right, that'll return this vector. If we press arrow left, it'll return this vector. If we, if we press anything else, requested dir is going to be undefined. So let's just see how this goes. I'm going to say if requested dir, then we'll just print requested dir at this point. So we shouldn't see anything in the console over here. This is why I love having a good tool. It tells me what I've forgotten. Now, what doesn't it like here? OK, it's confused. It doesn't know about P5's print. OK, we'll get the console back. We'll reload, and I'm going to press a key. Oh, got to click here to give the focus. 
press the key. So now we have this P5 vector with the, the 1, 0, 0. Um, this approach is working here. Then we could go on and create the other four. Uh, I don't think I'll do that now. Um, so let's see. If we do have a proper vector here, then we will say um, dir, which is our actual direction, gets set to the requested dir. And now I'll go back, and we should have the right arrow that's working on its own and the left arrow working on its own. Okay, so have we done what we set out to do, make a snake, uh, move a snake with keys, and I should really say move, moving a snake with keys by influencing the direction, but you get the idea. All right, um, let's just look through here. So this is the position of the snake, the direction that it's going to move each time. Um, this object that maps the key press, the key names to the vectors that uh, contain the directions. Here's the P5 setup function. We create a canvas. We initialize the position and the direction vectors to, to zero. So the position is at the origin and the direction is essentially motionless. It's, we're not moving anywhere. And then here's our mapping of the name of the key to the vector corresponding to the direction indicated by that key. Here's the draw function. And before we draw each time, we're gonna, we're gonna do whatever changes need to be made. And here we're gonna, we're gonna move the snake based on the direction. And we do that by taking the direction vector and adding it to the position vector. And that modifies the position vector. Make the background gray. We have the push and pop to isolate the effects of the transformation. We translate, which moves the box to the um, current position. The translate expects three arguments. So we take the position vector, turn it into an array of three elements, and then using the spread operator, spread those three elements across the three arguments expected by translate. Then we can draw the box and then pop. Okay. and reviewing key pressed, we take the key, which is a string with the name of the key, and we look it up in this key to dir object, and we either find a vector to go with it or we find undefined. And if we did find a vector, then we set the dir object to equal that vector. Okay, that concludes lesson one. See you next time.